and welcome to another walkthrough for SQL and databases. So now we're going to uh, actually do our first database work. I'm going into week one of the class. We assume that you've already um, done your initial database setup so that you have your keys, etc., although it will remind us this. Um, and so we'll use this practice programming assignment for the notebook, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about connecting to your database. Um, if you want to run this on your local computer, I would suggest you take a look at that. Um, but we're going to go into this graded external tool to make our first tables. Um, and again, this is launching out to the outside world. And here's all of your information and data. So, so this is, you've you got a database that's created. It's got a host, a port, and a database, a user, etc. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it the way, I'm going to, there's a couple ways we can do this. But first I'm going to do it the way we expect most of you will do most of the time. And that's to use this Jupyter Notebook. This is like your terminal for the course. And it's in hosted in Coursera. It uses a thing called Coursera Labs. And it gives us the opportunity to get a terminal. So this runs in a terminal. This is a, a Linux terminal. And you can... Uh, type commands. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we are going to go to this and this is the command to, to make a connection from a, a Unix command line to a Postgres database. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type that command here and now it's going to ask me for a password and this password is available here. You can show it if you got to like, but I'm just going to copy it straight into my um, paste buffer and paste that in. And now I'm logged in. I can see what tables I've got. And because the setup has this meta table, um, you, you can see this. Um, select star from PG4E meta. And you see what it puts in that. It's got some information and a little signature to make sure that um, uh, what we're doing is, is working. So that just leave that alone. It's something the autograder looks at and fiddles with. And so if we take a look at the actual assignment that we are supposed to do somewhere in here, um, let's go back to week one. <laughs> I should pop that up in a new tab. Let's go back to the graded external tool making our first table. So this turns out to be an assignment and you have something that you have to do. I won't, <laughs> I won't reopen this. So if you scroll down here, it says, so this is an auto grader, and if you check your answer, it's going to actually connect to your database and check to see if you've done your homework. We'll check the answer. It's like, oh, PG free debug doesn't work yet. So it tells you, well, you can create this table. You have to create this table. So we're going to go back into here, and we're going to run the create table command. I can do a DT to see that which the tables are there. So now we have two tables that PG free debug one. Now. Um, this is helpful because once you run the auto grader, it will show you some results. I'll show you that in a second. Um, so let's go ahead and check our answer and get our credit for this class. And so we've got our credit. But now what's cool about this PG free debug is you can take a look at what the auto grader did. And it's telling you the things the auto grader did. It did a select, it did this, blah, 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 blah. And it all worked. And so you get some feedback here uh, a detailed extended feedback from the auto grader when you are running in this. You can just see it. And the auto grader, when it's running, it writes stuff into this. And every time you rerun the auto grader, i.e. every time you press check, away you go. Now, a, a table you can optionally create because it has a little bit of personal information, mostly your grades. Um, not that they're all that sensitive, but if you create this table, which I'm going to, then it will, the auto grader will actually store your, you can use this as kind of like a funny grade book. So now I've created that table and I'm going to check my answer again. And now I can select star from PG4E underscore result. That's a little, what should I do? I should probably say score title note. Select score title note. Select score 
I want the title comma note from PG4E result. And you see that you got a perfect score on the game on the on the making our first tables, and that's a comment from the autograph. So you can make these two tables, and then you get a grade for this, and that's how it works. Now, you do not have to use this. There's a couple of other ways that you could do this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna log out, control D, and then I'm gonna log out of this, control D, and then I'm gonna close this, and I'm gonna close this. And so the next thing I'm gonna show you is if you wanted to run this on your laptop, you gotta get Postgres client installed, etc. So, but I have that all working, so I'm gonna go into my terminal. This is my Macintosh terminal. If you have Linux box or you could get a Postgres client of one form or another on Windows. But I type this same PSQL command that I was typing in Coursera Labs, copy the copy the password, and now I can say DT. And so this whole thing is accessible on the internet. I'm just, this is my Mac laptop. I can say select star from PG4E meta. I mean, it just shows that there's a database out there and we have multiple clients. One of the clients was running on Coursera and one of those clients was running on um, my laptop. And they're just talking in a sense, well, in a sense through the server right here that's sitting there out there on the internet. I'd recommend that use this practice programming assignment, which is really just your terminal for your course. And what I would do is I would make a bookmark of this, and then I would just bookmark this right here. This bookmark here, I'd like drag it, you know, and call it right here and have a bookmark. And then I can always come back to this page and then launch Jupyter Labs, and then poof, I'll have my terminal. You can't bookmark this because it has security. So you and then I have my terminal and I can do my work in my terminal. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this will help you be able to run your various Postgres commands on your systems. Cheers.